And the disgraced National Security Advisor has apparently given the Mueller team plenty to work with, sitting down 19 times with prosecutors, helping in three ongoing investigations. And right there, you might be saying, three? There's possible collusion, there's possible obstruction. What is number three? Well, the memo hints at it in several places, most notably in one, it talks about the general providing, quote, substantial assistance in a criminal investigation. Now take a look at what follows. The rest of the page and some of the next 22 lines in all blacked out. Presumably, they detail the criminal investigation General Flynn is providing substantial assistance with. What investigation that is and how he's cooperating, we don't know. We only know that it appears to be 22 lines worth of cooperation. The memo also points to what it calls the timeliness of the defendant's assistance. And I'm quoting again, his early cooperation was particularly valuable because he was one of the few people with long-term and first-hand insight regarding events and issues under investigation by the SCO, that's the special counsel's office. Now, in other words, he was a person in the room, a direct witness to matters the Mueller team is looking into during the campaign and the transition involving, potentially, the president's son, Don Jr., and son-in-law, Jared Kushner, which, of course, is the portion of the investigation, along with obstruction of justice, that we already know about. That other third investigation, that came out of left field and suggests there may be yet more we just don't know about in an operation that could be bigger than we once thought. Not only is it hard to know what to make of that until this memo hit, as I mentioned, we didn't even know to ask the questions. We'll be digging deeper, much deeper tonight into all of the clues contained in the Flynn memo. But first, what a key player in the congressional end of the investigation has to say about it, Senator Angus King, an independent of Maine. He caucuses with Democrats. He serves on the Senate Intelligence Committee. I spoke to him right before airtime. Senator King, the, the Flynn court filing and its 22 fully redacted lines certainly seems to have left more questions than, than answers at this point. Well, I, I, Anderson, I'm going to answer your question, but you have to understand that whatever I tell you does not relate to anything that I've learned on the Intelligence Committee. I have to, I have to lay that sure. as groundwork. And having said that, uh, I do think it raises a lot of questions, and we understand that uh, General Flynn spent many, many hours, I think something like 19 meetings with right. the uh, special uh, counsel's team, and so uh, it raises questions that he obviously had a lot to say. It's interesting because the president's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, says he isn't worried. He said that if Flynn had had information to share with Mueller that hurt the president, he said you would know it by now. That's not necessarily true, is it? Well, the one thing we know about the Mueller investigation is they've been very good at, at keeping quiet what they're doing. Uh, I think they know a lot more than we know they know. And so I, I don't necessarily uh, agree with that. And, and apparently uh, General Flynn did not have uh, any kind of information or legal sharing between his defense team uh, and, and the White House, So, uh, as, as I understand it. So they may well have some information. And, and I think, you know, until we find out what it is, uh, we're just not going to have a clear uh, picture. But we do know that uh, General Flynn was in Moscow in, I think, December of 15, sitting at a dinner with Vladimir Putin. Uh, and he was involved during the campaign. He was a top foreign policy advisor. And uh, the question is, was there some uh, relationship? And of course, the, the real focus is, was there some representation made about the sanctions that President Obama applied in, on the Crimea uh, invasion that we know that uh, Vladimir Putin hated? Uh, and you know, what was that all about? And were there, uh, what was the relationship between Mr. Flynn and our General Flynn and the president at that, or the president-elect at that time? So lots of questions, uh, but the answers will be forthcoming. I'm quite sure. There had been a lot of talk, and certainly from people in the uh, the Trump uh, Trump uh, administration, that Mueller was wrapping up, that there, the, the the end was in sight on this. Do you get that sense just? From, from what we were able to see in the, in the documents released last night. Uh, Jeff Tubin said, you know, it didn't, sure didn't seem to him like this was something that was just, you know, in the end days wrapping up. I, I don't get a sense one way or the other, Anderson. I don't get a sense that it's wrapping up or that it's not. It, it, it could be. Uh, I think one of the stories, if you will, uh, out of the Mueller investigation is the non-story, the fact that they've done a really pretty amazing job in this town of keeping you know, very quiet and deliberate about what they're doing. So yeah. I don't think you can draw much conclusion one way or the other. Your colleague, Senator Mark Warner, uh, recently said that, that your committee had referred a number of people suspected of lying in their testimony to the special counsel for prosecution. 
Can you say how many other witnesses you believe lied to you and your fellow senators? I can't. I, I can't give you a number, but I can tell you that uh, that was one of the things our committee decided to do. If there were references that were appropriate to the special counsel, we were going to make them and, and, and have done so. Just lastly, I, I want to ask you about President, uh, President Bush. I, obviously, he loved uh, your state of Maine, uh, had a place up there. I know you spent time with him at Kennebunkport. I wonder just what, what today was like for you, what went through your mind today as you honored his life at the National Cathedral? Well, it was a, it was a fantastic service, and, and all of the speakers were very poignant. And George W., President Bush, uh, 43, when he spoke, talked. He said it was, it was it was it was a very nice moment where he said, in his dad's last years, when he couldn't play golf, he was in a wheelchair. His favorite place was on the back uh, deck at at Walker's Point, looking out at the ocean and sort of absorbing this place that he'd spent every summer of his life, except for 1944 when he was in in the Pacific in the war. So Maine was really the geographic center of his family's life moving around the country, but they always came back. And toward the end of his life, they were there, he and Barbara were there from May to October. So they were friends and neighbors. And uh, I visited down, down at Walker's Point. They were a real integral part of the community. And it, it, uh, it, 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 it touched us particularly hard. Yeah, I can imagine. Senator King, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Anderson.